Okay, so this is a um, a preamble before question two point two. So before we jump into it, it introduces a new concept where we're dealing with a statically indeterminate problem. So I'm going to simplify that problem down and discuss that first before I do two point two. You can skip ahead to two point two to the next video. So we're used to dealing with <coughs> essentially some kind of framework. The simplest framework would be just one member. And we would put a hinge at one end and a pivot at another. The reason why we have to have just one hinge here be is be so to let in effect this beam to move. Okay, so if I change this pivot to be another hinge which is what we would normally see for a uh, bridge or whatever, we cannot mathematically solve this. What we're doing is we're creating too many unknowns. So if that's my RAX, RAY, BX, and BY. <coughs> so I can solve forces in the x direction, solve forces in the y direction, so that's two equations, and I can take moments. So I've got three equations I can use for this body. However, I've got four unknowns, so this is a uh, problem becomes indeterminate, it can't be solved. So, that's not good. So, um, there must be a, uh, another equation, something else we can introduce to try and solve this problem, because obviously this is a standard engineering problem, should be should be doable. And there is. And the clue is on Arnold's worksheet there, and it's the first equation that you're looking at. So, let's imagine now we're going to do this problem. I'm going to put my beam vertically and I'm going to apply a load here uh, in reality if I apply a load in a, a point here it create a lot of stress but we're ignoring those effects for the moment so imagine this load is nice, nicely distributed <coughs> and we'll call that load P 12 kilonewtons and this is a one meter long bar so we'll have 200 millimeters there, 800 millimeters there, and I will label this up that we will just have reactions at this point here. So that'd be my RA and that'd be my RB. Okay. So the load is being applied quite close to the pivot at RA. So we would actually imagine in this particular case that probably there would be more reaction at RA than there is at RB. You know, that would be our intu intuition as an engineer would tell us that. Because if we know that if we take that force and put it all the way down actually on the pivot, then in that case it would be the same and there would be no reaction at RB. So there must be some sort of something we can use to introduce that. The first thing we'd, we'd do is we'll look at um, uh, summing up the forces that you can see there. So we'll sum up the forces in the y direction. We won't bother in the x direction. There's nothing going on. <coughs> so we've got RA going upwards, RB going upwards, and the 12 kilonewtons coming downwards. And that will give you my first equation that I can use. Uh, righty. Now, the other thing I've seen from... Uh, example 2.1 so if you haven't done 2.1 you want to go back to it I've seen that I can do in effect a bit like a method of joints and look at what the forces are going to be inside particular sections so let's try and uh, try that approach for this problem so we will label up the lower section as 1 this time and the upper section as 2 so now let's make a free uh, do an imaginary cut through the the body there at one to expose the internal force and see if we can make uh, any progress 
So we cut through the body. We have RA. Our internal force needs to be pointing away and uh, through the cut. So that's our F1. Okay, so that's the only thing I can see when I'm in the lower section. So again, I'm going to apply the rule, sum up my forces in the y direction, and then that will give me F1 plus RA equals zero. <coughs> so we've got F1 equals minus RA. Now let's do a cut through the upper section. Okay, so we're going to cut through that section there. In this case, we've gone above the load. Whoops, so we have gone above the load. There's a load's coming down here. Alrighty. Uh, so that's going to be 12 kilonewtons coming down. And we are in section 2, so again, we're going to have an internal force. We define the internal force pointing, so it's going through the cut. So it's pointing through the cut. And then we've got RA at the bottom still. So add up all our forces going upwards, and then we've got uh, what F2, take away 12, plus RA, so I'm going down. So let's rearrange this, so we could say that F2 equals 12, take away RA. Right, okay, so now I've got 1, equation 1, <coughs> equation 2, and equation 3. And I've got how many unknowns? One, two, three, four. So I've got four equations. Uh, sorry, I've got four unknowns and three equations. So I need another equation. Where is that going to come from? Well, that's going to come from the fact that this is hinged into place. We're, we're imagining this can be fixed. So the total length of this beam, we're going to say, is n cannot change from one meter. 200 millimeters plus 800 millimeters. So I'm going to use this equation here that the change in extension of the beam is equal to the internal forces for each particular section, the length of that particular section. Uh, for this particular problem, E and A is going to be the say the same. So we'll just write that E and A. We're not interested about the section numbers there. Now. When I look at sum up all these things, I expect this to go to zero. Okay, so we've got F1 plus L1, E and A at the bottom. You can see that we don't actually need this in our calculation, the E and A. F2 plus uh, L2, E and A equals zero. I'm not making any assumption about uh, what's being squashed, what's being pulled here. So I'm just leaving my forces and I'm going to let the definition of whether it's intention being a positive or compression being negative take care of that. So I've now, I can now, I know what L1 is and I know what L2 is. And uh, the E and the A, they will, they will factorize. Um, so I can write this then, um, substitute in these equations here, and make this into an equation with just RA in it. So let's take the first one here. So the first one will be minus RA times by L1. So I've got rid of these, don't need them. Here we've got plus F2. So we're going to have the 12 take away RA here times by L2 equals 0. Okay, so what shall we do next? I can see, let's bring the R8 terms together because uh, that's what we're going to look for. So we've got minus RA L1 and here we've got minus here so that'd be plus L2. Okay, it's a total length. And on the other side, take this on the other side, it becomes a minus, that could be minus 12 times L2. Right, yeah. <coughs> so, substituting my numbers, and then I can find out what RA is going to be. So, I'm going to have RA equals 12, get rid of the minus signs, L1 plus L2. 
So we can see that L1 plus L2 is going to be the total length. So for my case, total length will be 1 meter and L2 section is 800 millimeters. So 12, let's work in millimeters, 800 divided by 1000. So 12 gives me 9.6 RA kilonewtons. And then all I need to do is go back to this equation here to find out RB. So RB equals 12 take away RA. So that's going to be 2.4 kilonewtons. And that kind of matches up with what I was guessing before, that uh, this force that I'm applying on the bar is closer to the RA, and I end up with a reaction that's bigger at RA compared to RB. Uh, but they're both, both reactions are going upwards also, as I expect. So that's the principle that we're going to be applying next for indeterminate vertical bar problems. So this is my preamble explanation for question 2.2.